This is a charge controller and this is a charge controller too, right? This is a PWM and this is an MPPT. This is pulse with modulation and this is maximum power point tracking. What exactly do they do? They charge your batteries or pretty much store energies in your battery for you to use as backup energy some of the time. So I'm guessing that's what you want, right? Something that has the ability to charge your batteries or store energy in your battery for you to use at a later time. So if that's what these two charge controllers do, they both have the ability to charge your batteries. So what's the point of these videos anyways? I think it's pretty much pointless because I'm supposed to be telling you what the differences are between these two types of charge controller while in actual fact there isn't. So at this point I'm really considering ending this video and pretty much walking away. What do you think? <laughs> I lied guys, there's actually a world of difference between these two types of charge controllers and if you hang on long enough, I'll tell you all you need to know about these two types of charge controllers. Stick around. Welcome back guys, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. Hope everybody's very cool. All right, so welcome. So we're trying to talk about these two charge controllers. But if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? You should have done that like yesterday. But if this is your first time on the channel, kindly subscribe, all right? We would love you to be part of this community. So from today, henceforth, nobody's ever going to tell you about what's going on in and around the world of solar technology. And don't forget, the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people who also need this information. So click the subscription button. All right. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share and do not forget to like. So let's get into it. What is exactly the differences between the PWM and the MPPT? So if you're having to have a solar installation done in your house, I'm sure you must have heard about these two types of charge controller, which is the PWM and the MPPT. And most times you wonder what exactly is the difference between these two charge controllers? Okay, so which one should I go for? Which one best suits my situation to be able to maximize as much energy as possible? So because what the charge controllers essentially do is that they control the energy that comes from the solar panels, all right? So when the solar panels are generating the energy from the sun and sending it down, the charge controllers take this energy and sends it down to the batteries and charge your batteries. So they essentially care for your batteries. They charge your batteries to ensure that it is fully charged. They're also there to serve the function of ensuring ensuring that your batteries are not overcharged by regulating the energy that comes from the solar panel. So if you're looking at having your solar installation done in your house, you really want to start enjoying the solar energy in your home and you want this installed. So you've spoken to your installers and I'm sure, pretty sure that these two names must have popped up, which is the MPPT and the PWM. The PWM simply means pulse width modulation. All right. And the MPPT means maximum power point track. So which one is exactly the best for you given your situation and your installation? So which one works best for you? So every one of them could go for a particular situation. So it all depends on what your configuration is. So a certain type of configuration or system arrangement or system limitations in terms of the components that you have, um, a PWM is definitely going to play a very great role in that setup. All right. Exactly the same way you have a different type of installation, an MPPT will be best suited for that type of installation that you have. And we're going to go into it like real quick. One of the very first differences between an MPPT and a PWM. Number one is your budget. All right. Essentially, your budget is the amount of money you have for this project because one is more expensive than the WM. And in most cases, it can buy the stuff four times. Unbelievable. This guy in most cases can buy this four times. And if I had to compare this to, this is a Fang Pusin, all right? A Fang Pusin, the cost of a Fang Pusin can pretty much buy this guy. I'm not kidding you, it can buy this like nine times. All right, so the MPPT is actually very expensive. All right, so if your budget is not so much and you don't have so much money, you definitely have to be going for a PWM. So that's number one difference between the two of them. 
Number two difference is going to be the fact that if you're doing your connections, all right, if you're connecting your solar panels, you definitely have to match the voltage of your PVs with that of your battery bank. So the solar panel voltage has to be very close to that of the battery. So if you have a 12 volt battery, you'd have to look for a solar panel that has a voltage that close, maybe like a 15 volt solar panel. So the reason why you have to do that is pretty much simple. If you have a 12 volt battery and you're using a 35 volt solar panel, what is essentially gonna happen is that this guy can only take a voltage up a notch. So if you have a 12 volt battery bank, the PWM is only gonna use 13 volts to charge it. That means you're gonna be losing 22 volts on that solar panel and that's a whole lot of waste. But the MPPT, what it's essentially gonna do is that it's gonna compensate for that loss. This guy does a better job with the voltage, all right? So when it extracts the 13 volts for you to charge a 12 volt battery, it is gonna decrease the voltage and increase the current. So you can as well refer to the MPPT as a current converter. So it does a very great job. So it brings down the voltage and increases the current. And of course, you know that a fusion of the current and the voltage gives you the wattage. So there's gonna be a lot of wattage coming from the MPPT going straight to your batteries. A lot of current, a lot of amperage will be going in to charge your batteries. So it utilizes that a whole lot better. So in the MPPT, you don't have to match any voltage, but in the PWM, you have to closely match the voltage of the solar panels and that of your battery bank. So if you have a 12 volt battery, you should be going for a 15 volt solar panel. If you have a 24 volt battery bank, you should be going for a 35 volt solar panel. You have to closely match the voltage to minimize voltage loss. The PWM is not that flexible to be able to decrease the voltage and increase the current. So it pretty much just extracts the 13 volts that you need and cuts off the rest. So in a 35 volt, solar panel connected to a 12 volt battery, you're pretty much gonna be losing 22 volts and that's a whole lot of energy lost. But in the MPPT, you don't have to worry about that. It does not require you to match any form of voltage. All right, so what it's essentially gonna do is that when, when it extracts the 13 volts that you need to charge your battery, it is going to boost the current. So it decreases the voltage and increases the current and then it begins to fire up your batteries when your batteries begin to boil. <laughs> The PWM cannot handle oversizing. I've been one of the biggest advocates of oversizing. All right, so when you have a whole lot of solar panels bigger than your installation, then you definitely have to use an MPPT. And the reason is very simple. Okay, so if you're using an oversized solar panels for your battery bank, it is gonna blow this guy up. This dude will not be able to handle that oversized solar panels. And the reason why having an oversized system is really very good is the fact that in the days of semi-autonomy, it helps you to be able to generate as much energy as possible. I mean, it's pretty much simple, right? The more solar panels you have, the more energy you'll be able to harvest. I've actually done a full video on oversizing and how very important it is in your solar system. All right, so I'll drop a link, click on the link and go watch the oversized videos. So the PWM, will not be able to handle oversizing, all right? So once you exceed the capacity which has been stipulated by the manufacturers, any other capacities or wattage or current that you're adding has the ability to damage this charge controller. When the current becomes way too much or the voltage becomes way too much or the wattage becomes way too much, it will damage this charge controller. But what the MPPT does is that the MPPT will take exactly what it needs and take the other one off, cut it off. Okay, so it doesn't really matter how much of solar panels that you have, as long as uh, you have an MPPT, which is an OEM. So this is like a very professional MPPT charge controller. So this works pretty well with oversizing. Another major difference between the MPPT and the PWM is the fact that most of your routing and connections is limited to parallel connections. You know, in parallel, you're trying to achieve uh, maintaining the same voltage, but increasing the current. So when you have that huge current traveling through the system, you're definitely gonna need a very thick wire, a very huge wire gauge to be able to handle that current. And that is a whole lot of money, okay? So that is gonna cost you a lot of money. So that in itself makes the installation more expensive when you're using a PWM 
because the PWM is going to need heavy wire gauge to be able to handle the much current that is coming in uh, because of the fact that you're limited to a lot of parallel connections so you have a lot of current traveling through the system through the wires so if you use a very low wire gauge the wires will start heating up so you're going to need a very huge wire gauge to be able to um, get these electrons and all of these um, currents uh, that is passing through to be able to get to the receiving devices. Okay, so that in itself will definitely make it more expensive. But if you had to use an MPPT, uh, your connections will be in series. And when you have series connections, there's less current traveling through the wires. Okay, so it makes it less expensive in that regards to be able to use an MPPT. But if you choose to use a PWM, then you might have to buy a lot of huge gauge wires. Another major difference between the PWM and the MPPT is that from the way the PWM is built, I don't know if this is too harsh to say, but it's pretty much garbage in, garbage out. All right, so whenever the sun goes down, it goes down with the sun. It doesn't make an extra effort to continue to track energy for you. And it's even worse in situations when it is cloudy. So if you're living in very hazy areas, don't touch this charge controller, all right? So in situations when it is very cloudy, it looks like it's about to rain, it's all cloudy, and you can't see any presence of sunshine, the PWM pretty much goes to sleep. If you're listening very closely, you're going to hear it snoring. <laughs> but the beauty of the MPPT in such situation is that the MPPT is never tired of tracking. And that's why it's called maximum power point tracking because it continues to track and track and get you in energy whilst this guy is sleeping on duty. All right. So in that regards, an MPPT is very much preferable. So for people who are living in cloudy areas, hazy areas where you have less sunshine, places like Canada, I will advise you, please do not touch your PWM. Go for an MPPT, all right? A very good place where you can use the PWM is situations where your setup is not really that much. So there's no much energy needs in your installation, pretty much like two batteries, one battery. Okay, so what you essentially do is just to parallel your solar panels not so much of solar panel so you don't have the need for so much energy a pwm comes pretty much handy in some arrangements or compositions in your installation some people don't have more than 400 watts you know energy production or the energy worth or the sizing in that particular installation so there's really no need for you to get an mppt that will be a wasted investment for all the money you spend buying it because it's going to be underutilized okay so the pwm in that instance or situation is most ideal for you to get it for that purpose another difference is the pwm doesn't come in most cases it doesn't come with a temperature sensor and temperature sensors are really really very important in your solar installation so i've done a full video on temperature sensors and how important it is and how to use it or apply it in your solar system i'm going to leave a link for you on the screen where you can click and go and watch uh, the full video on temperature sensor is very very important most pwm do not come with temperature sensor there's really no port for you to plug it in no provision for it no compatibility no place for you to plug it in so there's absolutely nothing that monitors your batteries to know if your batteries are cool if your batteries are hot so it's just going to keep firing your batteries just going to keep charging your batteries and in that way if there is no temperature compensation you could damage your batteries prematurely and that's a downside for pwm as it doesn't come in most cases with temperature sensor but an mppt comes fully equipped with a temperature sensor so it's able to monitor the temperature of your battery if it's too hot it's going to drop the current that it's using to charge it pretty much using all the parameters and all the functions that it's been equipped with to be able to care for your batteries and make your batteries last a lot longer and the PWM doesn't have so much function like the MPPT. There's a whole lot of functions beyond just charging your batteries, all right? For instance, the PWM in most cases will not be able to equalize your batteries and you do need to equalize your batteries every now and then to be able to prolong their lifespan, okay? But the PWM doesn't have that capacity. 
for the MPPT can equalize your batteries and you pretty much set it to be able to equalize your system periodically or you set it to um, equalize your batteries every 15 days or you just want to instantly equalize your batteries the MPPT can do that so for most PWM they might not be able to equalize your batteries and so many other functions like the absorb N amp the wake up amp um, the rebog voltage and so many other functions so it it doesn't have that much functions of flexibility just like the MPPT world all right so on that part the MPPT pretty much knocks out the PWM if you have a space constraint you have very limited space for you to mount your solar panels but you want to maximize and get the very best of energy then you should be going for MPPT all right because the MPPT has the ability to be able to maximize and get you a lot of energy in a very small space so if you have a very small space that is provided for you to be able to mount your solar panels but you're hoping to enjoy a lot of energy so that means you're limited in space you have a situation of a space constraint to be able to do your solar installation so what are you going to do the next rational line of thinking will be to get big wattages, all right? You get big wattages in your solar panels, all right? So it's gonna come with high current, it's gonna come with high voltage, okay? So in that situation, that would help you to be able to maximize that space and get you a lot of energy. Then the MPPT is your best guy. They'll be able to handle those solar panels and get you as much energy as possible from that very small space that you have allotted. With a PWM, you can build a scalable system. And professionally, when you're building a system for a client, it has to be scalable, all right? So you have to do it in such a way that if your client wants to upgrade, add more solar panels, add more batteries, it's gonna be very easy for your client, all right? So you don't have to change anything. All you need to do is to keep upgrading, keep adding, double up your solar panels, double up your batteries, just keep increasing that means you have built a scalable system but the pwm is very limiting so you won't be able to do that so if you're using a pwm to do your connection it's quite limiting all right so because you're in a low budget and you go for it so when you want to upgrade you might not be able to handle the much solar panels that you want to add right so you definitely have to change it to get something else to get an mppt perhaps all right so it doesn't give you that room so pwm has no place in a very scalable system So I also talked about it that where you live is very important. You have to look at the climate where you live. So if you're living in a place where there isn't so much of sunshine, then you have to worry about the type of charge controller you need because it's going to play a major role in trying to get the energy for you. So you have very scarce energy out there for it to get for you. So the MPPT will be most preferable. But if you're living in the tropics, then you can get away with PWM. In the tropics, you have a lot of sunshine. Most times you're guaranteed for seven, eight hours of sunshine. So if you're living in places where you don't have so much of sunshine, it's always hazy, it's always cloudy, there isn't much of sunshine, then you need to go for an MPPT to help you in that situation to get the very least uh, energy that is available and convert that to the energy needs and begin to serve your energy purpose, all right? So let's talk about the efficiency rates for these two, the efficiency conversion rates for these two charge controllers. The PWM will be able to give you 75% efficiency conversion rate, while the MPPT is definitely going to give you 95%. So the MPPT is a newer technology. All right, so that's why um, they've put a lot of things into consideration. This is pretty much a glorified um, switch on and off. Um, charge controllers because that's the very first charge controller which is the switch charge controller on and off and then you have the PWM so it's a little bit advanced than the switch uh, charge controller but the MPPT is more advanced in terms of efficiency in terms of charging the batteries in terms of energy conversions and all of that so pretty much they are not the same thing and the prices of the budget tells you a lot more the MPPT is way more expensive than the PWM all right so it's more efficient so if you can afford it i think it's worth every money you're investing in it to be able to get yourself an mppt that's it guys that's all we can take today in trying to compare the mppt and the pwm charge controllers if you haven't subscribed i've given you so many reasons why you need to subscribe 
which one of them is being a member of this community. I would love you to be part of it. It's important to me and to so many of us who are already part of this solar energy community, all right? And don't also forget that the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people who need this information. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment, to share, and to like. See you guys in the next video.